All right, so you go into business. Your idea, it's a great idea. Um, you know, you're all excited because you can do this certain thing, whether it be a good or service. Um, you invented this product and, um, you know, you're all excited about being in business. So you get it. Um, of course, there's growth now. So you may start off as a uh, owner operator, um, self-employed status, which is, is, is the most risky way to be in your business because, you know, you got to be there in order to make the money's active driven income. But eventually you build your business, you grow it, and then you have a staff, um, you try to bring them on. Here's where growth gets very difficult. You got to expect that um, when you put other people in the position that you're replacing. So let's just say you're doing everything, right? So marketing, invoicing, shipping, um, sales, operations, admin stuff, all of that. So you, you got to determine what's the most important positions to fill first. So you got to look at what's tying you up the most or causing you, uh, or it's probably the least impactful as far as the growth. You bring someone in, <clears throat> in many cases, it's just simply seeing was the cheapest position to hire. You put someone in that position. You put them in that position. Now you have more time, right? So you free up your time because you don't have to do that thing and you move on. So you're replicating this situation until you have all the ideal positions filled and you're pretty much just monitoring your business, right? I'm sure you've heard the whole thing about um, CEOs and founders should be working on their business and not just working in their business. But working in your business in the beginning is often necessary for you to get the idea, uh, build a culture, or get the idea of how the business should run, um, build the culture, understand the personality of the business, understand the dynamics of your customers, the customer fulfillment process, service, service recovery strategies, you know, all that stuff, right? And I'm telling you from experience because I, I own multiple businesses, 11 total, and um, going through that with all of them, it's pretty much the same thing. It doesn't matter how long you've been an entrepreneur, um, you just go through this stuff, right? So um, so you're doing that. You're going through that whole process, Um and you're putting people in, in position. What I want you to, 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 to digest and understand is um, you're going to lose quality in your positions, right? Um, expect that each person will deliver 70% of the same quality that you have. Now, it's multiple reasons, right? So it's um, because you have the vested interest, the idea is your passion, someone may be high, working for you that they're not working fully in their passion, that kind of stuff. But what you're trying to do is ensure that that quality doesn't fade. Um, but you cannot be so neurotic that you're not free from the business. So you don't want to hire someone, you're paying them and you're still micromanaging them, micromanaging them, or you're having to stay on top of them. That defeats the purpose. You've got the wrong people, right? So I'll get back to that in a second. But now you're doing it. So you got to digest and understand that you may have a 30% loss. Now, a 30% loss of quality could be a big deal. Could be a deal breaker. Could be that you lose customers the whole night. So how do you really, uh, you know, prevent that? Well, one of the things that I always talk to clients and students about is the way to prevent that is having policies. So you want to have checklists, right? You want to make your business as dummy proof as possible. So if you have certain things that they sign, standard operating procedures for certain tasks, certain projects, certain positions, um, you have operations manual that they sign. So they have an understanding of how to mechanically de uh, deliver on that thing of whatever they're doing and their mechanics help to preserve some of the quality, right? Because you don't want to have someone coming into an amb ambiguous situation where you're expecting them to read your mind or use their own mind and things don't seem uniform, things are thrown off and you have this level of frustration because you're thinking you're hiring idiots, but you're not really hiring idiots. You're hiring people with less passion for that position as you do and less experience than you have. Now, going towards the experience part, Someone may work for you for five, 10 years and they gain a whole lot of experience, but they still haven't gained much insight. So experience and insight are two different things. They may have the experience to do that task, but they don't have the insight on the company's direction or its growth the way it needs to be. You're thinking about your company 24 seven. You're thinking about your business all the time. The people that work for you typically aren't. Um, they're typically clocking out and they, they're they gone. They're weekends. You've done it. You've been an employee yourself, I'm sure. You think about your weekends and these people aren't paying you enough to think about all that stuff. So they miss a lot of things and ideas that may cross their path when they're out at the movies or restaurants and stuff like that because they're not thinking about that. For you, you're always on, right? So this is where your, your friends or circles of people who are not entrepreneurs will constantly tell you, turn off, turn off, you're always on. It's, it's That's when you got to shuffle and get the right people around who understands the dynamics of constantly being on, right? Because 
you, you should not be in business just to make money. You're in, you're in business to influence society and impact lives. That's really what you should be doing. So you're constantly thinking and seeing things and like, oh, that's a great idea. You're at a restaurant. You see them do something like, oh, that's a good idea for my business. They're not thinking like that, right? Your staff is not thinking like that. And you really shouldn't expect them to think like that. Have a, a little bit lower expectation so you don't have a high level of frustration. So, boom. So you expect to lose 70%. Um, there will be losses they, they, uh, throughout the company. Um, customers as well may not... Um, have the same vested interest as your business to see you thrive or whatever they're coming for the thing that you have they're just exchanging their money for that thing not necessarily wanting to see you grow for, for lack of better words it's not that they may want you to see want to see you fail but their interest is not in that their interest is in saving as much money as possible and getting uh uh their return being as high as 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 they possibly can so if they can get more products for less money, they'll take it. If they get the products for free, they'll take it. Of course, we have laws in place to fear people, uh, scare people into not stealing and stuff, but it happens, right? So, so you have to think about those losses. An entrepreneur or business owner or founder who refuses to have any level of loss will have very little growth because they're going to want to be uh, pulling guard on their business all the time and constantly they're looking over the employee's shoulder and over the customer. They don't want to lose anything. But when you don't accept that everyone's not going to have the same vested interest as your business, then you don't grow because you, you, you don't know how to accept some losses. People are even going to criticize. They're going to say that your business is shoddy, this kind of stuff, right? So you, you just have to accept that kind of stuff. Now, I, I explained one way to prevent that with your operations manual, that kind of stuff. Uh, the second way to uh, try to prevent some of the, the loss or the growth issues is the recruitment. So you want to make sure you're recruiting the right people. Too often people recruit from familiar or comfortable grounds. Comfortable grounds being uh, family and friends, referrals, people they know the whole night. Those, those aren't the people that's going to come in necessarily. I can't speak conclusively, but uh, majority times they're not going to come in with the same level of input or professionalism for you if they know you from another space of your life, right? So your recruitment needs to be done well. Go out into the open market and find the people that can match the skills that you need them to match. Two, I mean three, your indoctrination. So how you bring them on board says a lot. Now I'm going to tell you, pay does not return necessarily great workers. Now what does uh, help retain workers is certification. So if they're in a position, a certification uh, position where they would lose their licenses or certification or whatever, they tend to be less um, apathetic towards a business. But you, if you're not running that type of a business, then the issue will be um, the, uh, the, 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 the retention of them and retaining them. You have to feed them with different things outside of money. So some people will show up because of the compensation and all that stuff. Um, that may attract them to your business, but the culture is what will keep them or lose them. Um, so your culture has to be right. So the indoctrination, very, very clear stuff. I told you about the operations manual. If they're coming into that, that's 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 a good culture that they're stepping into because more clearly defined um, roles of the business and expectations of the business, right? Um, all this stuff is taught in our program, Power of Black, uh, if, you if you're not familiar with my school, Urban Business Institute. Um, but, I, but I just want to share some tips for people in the open market of those that are feeling frustration in growing their businesses. Um, so the indoctrination, of course, how you bring them in, the assessments. Um, I give uh, training uh, to every position. doesn't matter who you are. You work for any of my companies. They're, they're training, um, checklists, self-guided training, a bunch of different stuff. But you want to have something structured where um, they're, they're coming into um, it's not about just money because you can find great workers at McDonald's and you can find horrible workers on Wall Street. So it's not the money. You're looking for different things. How I hire, I hire with, with a three priority um, checklist that I look for, right? So I look for character is my highest, charisma is number two, and competence is number three. Many people chase competence. Who can do the job? But the thing is, you can train competence. You can't train character. So, so my interviews are often unorthodox where it throws people off the questions that I ask, um, trying to identify their um, their character. And then if they're people persons, right? So do they have the social skills? Do they're flexible? They can adapt. 
um, the charisma to move through certain situations. That's number two. And number three, like I said, is competence um, because you can train that. So those are some of the things that I do when I when I, I look for that. Now, when you're talking about growing your business, um, especially when you're removing yourself from certain positions, you may have criticism. You may have um, cu customers who knew you when you were doing that put, uh, job, that specific job, and they had a great experience. Your survey um, scores were high, and then you re you hired someone, and then it drops. And those customers that knew the, or did business with your company prior to that person being hired, they have a, a measuring stick, right? So they, they have something to compare it to, and then sometimes they get this gruntle. Um, that's an issue. Uh, uh, that you have to kind of move through and sometimes you have to educate customers. I mean, quite honestly, um, especially in our community, a lot of customers um, hold black businesses' feet to the fire more than they do other businesses. I'll give you a perfect example. If they go to McDonald's, um, there's, there's, there's often a turnover. Even Chick-fil-A, one of the best fast food restaurants known, restaurants in general known, they got turnover and they got very high turnover. But People still go to them, not expecting to see that exact face doing that exact thing for them. In your business, if you are you have a turnover, every business is going to have a turnover. But let's just say you have a turnover that's not maybe, maybe even that high. They're going to criticize, you're almost saying like something's wrong with your company because these people are leaving. And people will leave companies. They have left companies. Those same customers leave companies. Your employees leave companies. That's just what happens. You're lucky when people stick around for a long time. I mean, I have people working with me 15 years, some 10, some less, some last only a month, some only last two weeks. Um, that's just the relationship thing, right? So it's like assuming that you're going to fall in love in high school when you, 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 the first person you slept with wound up being your, your, your spouse. So even you got married first and then you had sex and you had these kids. And that's like the storybook. But in reality, relationships are relationships, even when it comes to employee, employer, company, customer, where people are trying to find what best fits or best, best works for them. So um, you're going to have that. And, and it's, it's an unfair um, accusation and criticism against businesses that just have turnover. And some of the turnover might just be normal, especially if you're in retail. Retail is a highly transient um, business. And if you don't have certain things in place, people will come and people go. I have come to master the, the retail space a lot more where, you know, where I had turnovers of people lasting you know, a couple months. Now I got people that stick around, you know, two years is probably average. And, and that's just high. If you go to retail stores in the mall or, or, or shops, shopping centers or whatever, you just see turnover. Um, so that's, that's just, that's just uh, some advice to uh, customers that are maybe um, unfairly criticizing you. I talk a lot about this in my book, Blackpreneurship, 50 Obstacles Black Entrepreneurs Face and How to Overcome Them. Of course, you can get that from the blackpreneur.com. All right, so let's go back to growth. Um, so in order to make sure that you try to preserve as much quality as possible, again, like I said, the mechanics have to be their steps, operations manuals, making sure people um, develop that vested interest, steer them towards your vision, let them know your mission statements, have them to understand your objectives of your company, um, and you're going to pretty much grow uh, at a decent level as, as the company grows. Um, you have companies, large companies such as like Starbucks, they fumbled the ball. I mean, they had some issues with racism. Companies like Waffle House, I mean, large companies, the, the employees just fumble the ball. And it does, doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad company, um, but employees just fumble the ball. But what happens is when the employees fumble the ball, customers castigate the company. You know what I'm saying? So, um, small businesses, especially black owned businesses, we can't stomach what large corporations can stomach or what non-black businesses can stomach. When people would stop doing business with a non-black business, uh, that specific company or that specific branch, but not the company, they may get mad at that Starbucks, but go to other Starbucks. Uh, they may get at that mad at that McDonald's, but go to other McDonald's. We often don't get that same type of consideration or compassion or second chance people just lump black businesses into that's why i don't do business with black companies that's why i don't mess with black businesses but if you really peel peel the layers off a lot of these companies 
have black employees that fumble the ball at their company. And we don't say, oh, I'm not messing with companies that have black workers. We go straight to, I'm not messing with a black owned company because we just so happen to have black workers that fumble the ball. And I'm saying black workers because that's another obstacle black entrepreneurs, black business owners face that we don't necessarily have a long list of non-black workers willing to work for us. Um, so we tend to get the, the the black worker until our company grows to a large level where other diverse people, people of diverse backgrounds will be willing to work for us. So um, these are some of the growth challenges that you will have. Um, again, you need detail help or you, you want some type of training or consulting, of course, go to urbanbusinessinstitute.com or call me 770-850-9949. Um, you know, we have programs and stuff that can help you, but hopefully some things that I've said here will help you um, shift and align your thinking and align your business a little bit better um, where you understand that growth can be great, but it also comes with its challenges. Um, revenue could increase or the stress can increase because now you have more moving parts. You have more people that you have, ex you have replaced yourself from doing the work with, with them. Um, now you have to manage them. Um, uh, in addition to managing them, you're paying them. It is a tough thing. Um, and, and I face them as well in my businesses, um, trying to keep my staff on top of the, the ball, making sure I try to hire the right people. And there's no formula. There's no blueprint. Um, many people who have never been in business thinks that it's just a simple blueprint. You just need to hire good people. I don't think any company sets out to hire bad people. It's just the resources that they have to be able to attract the best worker that they can possible. They, they may not be able to pay the highest. They may not be able to hire uh, headhunter firms or have the best compensation packages or be located in the best side of town. Or it, it, they're just challenges that's, that businesses have that a lot of people who are sitting on the sidelines spectating businesses do not understand. Um, so I'm just speaking to you, the black business entrepreneur, the black business owner, um, you know, just keep going. You, the business is never perfect. You're going to be tweaking things along the way. You're going to be learning things yourself. You're going to be doing things yourself um, that you found to be a great idea. Don't keep it to yourself. Put it on paper. Make it as part of your training for your staff. Share it with your staff so they can mimic that behavior. Um, of course, don't overshare things that can cause them to turn into competitors or, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, but I just will say, share with them the things that will help enhance your business and hopefully not diminish your quality too much where customers are just so critical and then your business fails. It is not an easy process. The average time to build a sustainable business is seven years. It's more of a marathon. It's not an overnight thing or else everybody will be doing it. The spectators on the sidelines probably fail their businesses themselves. So you you just want to keep moving, but but just know that you gotta be you gotta have thick skin and tweak that business, tweak that business, adjust things, learn things, and keep trying to make it better. You may lose a customer here or there, you may have an unhappy client here and there, but for the most part, you want to keep your business thriving. So um, I just want to employ you on that those pieces. Um, so uh, hopefully you can. Um, you can thrive and have your businesses grow. Again, if you need any for assistance, urbanbusinessinstitute.com, or you can visit my website, devinrobinson.com. But if, if, if you're trying to test the waters, because I know there's a lot of people out here that says they can help you with business and all that stuff. This is like a real, real passion for me. Like they call me Professor Devin because I, this is what I do. I teach. I've taught colleges eight years. This is really what I do. So if you, if you want to just put your toe in the water, go to blackpreneur.com. Check out my book, Blackpreneurship. I've been told it's the Bible. Um, I shared like from a real organic place on the things that we face. You, you understand that we all share these common things across the world with each other, uh, blackpreneurship. And it's really a study, um, that you have to master. You master blackpreneurship, then you can go on to conquer entrepreneurship, but you can't really conquer entrepreneurship until you master and understand blackpreneurship. All right. So that's it. I'm signing out. Uh, I'll see you guys out there. Um, and m much success to you.